Good morning. In today's topic, we are going to see the formation and the branches of circle of Willis. So, how the circle of Willis is formed? The circle of Willis is formed by two important sources. You can see the two primary sources. One is this one, the vertebral artery. You can see the two vertebral arteries. And this is the next source, which is the internal carotid artery. You can see the two internal carotid artery. These vertebral arteries are branch of subclavian artery. After it starts from the subclavian artery at the neck, it will ascend up through the upper six cervical vertebrae. These are the foramen transverse area of the upper six cervical vertebrae. It will ascend up through the foramen transverse area of the upper six cervical vertebrae. Once it reaches the atlas, once it reaches the level of the atlas, after it passes through the foramen transverse atlas, it arches posteriorly. It arches posteriorly. Once it arches posteriorly, here it pierces the atlanto-occipital membrane to enter inside the foramen magnum. To enter inside the foramen magnum. So it enters here and here it pierces the atlanto-occipital membrane to enter inside the foramen magnum. Now it enters inside the foramen magnum. Once it enters through the foramen magnum, it is seen on the anterolateral aspect of the medulla. At the pontomedullary junction, at the pontomedullary junction, these two vertebral arteries unite to form this artery called the basilar artery, which will be lying on the basilar sulcus on the pons. These are the pons. It will be lying on the basilar sulcus of the pons. Now, this vertebral artery terminates by these two terminal branches. You can see these two terminal branches. These two are the posterior cerebral artery. So, it terminates as posterior cerebral artery. This is the fate of vertebral artery and its branches. Important branches which will form circular villages. Other branches we will see later. Next source what we have to see is about the common carotid uh, to see about the internal carotid artery. You can see these two are the internal carotid artery. It will reach this base of the brain through the carotid canal through the carotid canal. Now we will see the carotid canal. So this is the carotid canal. Through here it enters and it will come out through the foramen here near the foramen lacerum. So this lateral boundary of the foramen lacerum has the opening of carotid canal. So you can see that is a carotid canal. So it enters here. So after entering here it will be present in the in relation to the interpeduncular fossa. That's what we are seeing in the specimen. Now, once it reaches here, it divides into two important branches. One branch which goes laterally, you can see here, one branch, branch which goes laterally. This is the branch. It's more or less like a main trunk or the main continuation of the artery. You can see this. That is the middle cerebral artery. That is the middle cerebral artery. That is the middle cerebral artery. So, this is the middle cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery. Now, there is one more important branch which goes anteriorly. You can see here. This is the anterior branch. This is the anterior cerebral artery. So, this is the anterior cerebral artery which is the anterior branch. It is going anteriorly. You can see going here. It is going here. So, anterior cerebral artery is present on either side, just like that. Here we have the middle cerebral artery here, and there is one more branch that is the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, and there is the next branch which goes posteriorly and it communicates with that of the posterior cerebral artery. This is the posterior cerebral artery, and this is the communicating branch which is connecting the internal carotid artery with that of the posterior cerebral artery. This is the posterior communicating artery. You see it on either side, the posterior communicating artery. Now, here the anterior cerebral artery on either side is connected in the midline. You can see the connection here. You can see the connection here. That is the anterior communicating artery. You can see the anterior communicating artery connecting the two anterior cerebral artery. So, now if you see it is having six, it is looking like it is having six sides. It is having a polygon, polygon with the six sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Internal carotid artery also has some other branches which does not take part in the formation of the circle. You can see this one is the anterior choroidal artery. 
This is the anterior choroidal artery. See on either side, there is anterior choroidal artery. So these are the components of circle of villus. So once more we will revise the two vertebral artery. You need to form the basilar artery. The basilar artery will terminate as the posterior cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral, two posterior cerebral arteries. That is about the vertebral source. Next, the internal carotid artery gives three main branches. One is the middle cerebral artery. And next is the anterior cerebral artery, and one more is the posterior communicating artery. Now, the posterior communicating artery is communicating the internal is joining the internal carotid artery to that of the posterior cerebral artery. And here, the two anterior cerebral arteries are communicating by means of the anterior communicating branch or the anterior communicating artery. That is the formation of circle of villus. Now you see the direction of these branches which will help us to understand the area supplied by these branches and the applied importance. Okay, now you see the anterior cerebral artery, it is going anteriorly, it will wind around the corpus callosum like this. It will wind around the corpus callosum like that. So it will be mostly supplying this frontal region and all those things we will study in the area supplied later. Next you can see this middle cerebral artery. This middle cerebral artery, you can see it is going into the stem of the lateral sulcus. It is going into the stem of the lateral sulcus to go along the lateral sulcus. So it will be mainly supplying the most of the regions of suprolateral surface. That also we will see in detail in our diagram illustration videos. Next, you can see the posterior cerebral artery here. You can see it is winding posteriorly. It is winding posteriorly. It is present along in relation to the in relation to the midbrain and the inferior aspect of the temporal lobe, inferior aspect of the temporal lobe to go up to the occipital region. So mainly it will be supplying this region. Okay, so this is about the circular pillars and the branches, important branches and the course of those important branches.